Munich, 8 p.m. on a Friday night. The street lights have already been switched off. It's dark, and I'm all by myself. I'm nervous. I'm sitting at a bar and I'm waiting. I'm waiting for my greatest enemy, a man who has moved masses against me on social media. He is one of the loudest voices in a shitstorm that kept me awake for days now. My name is Celine Flores Villas, and today I want to tell you how my account became one of the top 15 accounts on LinkedIn in Germany, and how social media can become the most important tool for reaching your goals too. I will take you with me on a journey now. I will let you know how everything started. I will then share with you three key lessons that skyrocketed my reach on LinkedIn. And yes, then we'll get back to that situation at the bar in Munich. Well, four years ago, I was in the final stages of my master's degree in business communication. And like every other student, you know, I lived in a small flat chair in Stuttgart, and I was earning some extra money from my student job. At the time, I was working at the management consulting firm EY, Ernst & Young. My daily routine, well, university, work, go to sleep, and repeat. And about twice a week, I broke that routine, and it was more like, University, work, getting drunk, sleep, and repeat. So all in all, a pretty typical student routine. At EY, I worked in the innovation team. The goal was to show employees and clients how to rethink and innovate business models. We were asking ourselves questions like, how did Netflix disrupt the streaming industry? And how can we attract more customers, more users to a platform? And why is IKEA so successful despite the fact that everybody fails to assemble the furniture? Well, I was fascinated by all these learnings, insights, all these business opportunities. So much that I couldn't keep it to myself. I wanted to share it, pass it on to others. So I started thinking about how to do it. And I started with my target group. I wanted to target decision makers. People who have the power to say yes or no to an idea, whether to innovate a business model or not. So that was probably a target group. At a minimum age of 30, maybe even up to 60, mostly with an academic background. So I kept on researching and LinkedIn caught my eye. Did you know that 45% of all Content readers on LinkedIn are CEOs, executive managers, and vice presidents. It is the platform for decision makers worldwide. So without thinking about it too much, I just posted my first video on LinkedIn about business model innovation. I had around 300 contacts back then, and I went to bed that night. I woke up the other day, boom, 10,000 views the next day. I mean, how was that even possible with entrepreneurial content and not with bikini photos at the beach eating an acai bowl? I was hooked. And I clicked through different forums, especially the American ones. And I found out that it was already huge in the US. There was talk of so-called LinkedIn influencers. And that's when it hit me. If this is big in America now, it's going to be big in Europe too. It was only a matter of time. So I kept on producing videos, I kept on creating content, and I remember one day back then particularly well. I went back to the office again after a long time. And I walk in, and I, I, I feel the stares of my colleagues. I feel like I'm being watched. Was there toilet paper stuck to my foot again? No, there wasn't. And then, what I was so afraid of happened. A colleague walks into me and he's like, so Celine, what are you doing there on LinkedIn? And then that really nasty laugh. All my euphoria was crushed by doubts. What if my plan doesn't work out? What if nobody is interested in my posts? I'd be the laughing stock of my colleagues. 
And on the other hand, there was always this inner voice saying, hey, if you don't follow through and let others intimidate you, you're always going to ask yourself, what if? What if a huge community grows out of it? What if this becomes really big, maybe even so big that one day you can earn your living with it? Have you ever been in a situation like this? And how did you decide? Well, I didn't want to look back and think, what if? So I decided to follow my gut and make a real plan. So I put all my knowledge, all my strategy into a detailed PowerPoint presentation. It was a carefully laid out plan, and I was determined to see it through. So a few months later, I cracked the 5,000 follower mark. And then LinkedIn approached me and officially awarded me as one of the LinkedIn top voices, an award for the top 25 accounts within the German-speaking region on LinkedIn. I mean, just imagine me, little Celine, a student from Stuttgart, receiving an award alongside CEOs, founders, and DAX board members. I could hardly believe it. During that time, I tried out all different things, and I learned a lot about content creation. So I now want to share with you my three key lessons that skyrocketed my reach on LinkedIn. Lesson one, boost your expertise. To boost my reputation, I did a lot of interviews, mostly with experts who had already successfully established themselves within the field of innovation and technology. So this later on turned out to be one of the most important credibility hacks. Why? Because through these expert interviews, a certain expertise was gradually associated with me too. So I was able to boost my image with these interviews. Think about it. Who would you need to talk to in order to impress others from your industry? But it's not just about the image. You learn such an incredible amount that you become an expert yourself. Lesson two, add value. Well, we all know them, right? Those social media posts of great holidays with the perfect view and pictures of perfect gym buddies or that push notification letting you know that your ex-partner has just been promoted. Well, who's getting these posts on social media? Do you? Well, yes, a lot of you do. I get them too. And, well, do we feel good when looking at them? I don't. And are these posts in any way beneficial to our lives? No, absolutely not. They are simply annoying, okay? So do me a favor and don't be annoying on social media. If you share your successes, like here in this example, don't just say how great it all is and how excited you are. For example, if you're getting your Scrum Master certificate, like in the example, don't just say how great it all is, but add value. Give the user something they can take away from it straight away, immediately, okay? If you share your Scrum Master certificate, then tell me what you learned. What are your key lessons? Or how did you prepare for the test? That's something I'm, as a user, I'm interested in. So please add value to your post. Lesson three. So share your personality. That's another one. Of course, I also talked about my everyday life, right? Like here in this example. This is me napping backstage at an event I hosted. I made it my mission to be as truthful as possible, not just sharing my successes, but also what goes wrong about my everyday life. What I learned? Well, it's not only my professional contributions that make my brand. If, well, we think of specialist media, specialist media is far better at researching information than we are. If we try to emulate that, we're competing against an army of journalists who can master far more resources than we can. In Germany alone, there are 36,000 permanently employed journalists. But what they, generally speaking, cannot do is show a little personality. Media is supposed to be fact-based, and they cannot share a picture of themselves napping at lunch either, right? So during that time, I learned a lot and I experienced it a lot. And I wouldn't have been able to gain all these insights if I hadn't done all these experiments. I learned that social media is an experiment. You have to test, learn, and adapt if you want to make it to the top. 
But social media isn't always easy. In fact, it can be quite hard. In 2019, I wrote an article that turned into a nightmare for me, at least at the time. But let me explain how it started. So, in the beginning of 2019, something slowly started to bother me. I heard more and more women complaining. We are disadvantaged here, and we don't get this and that, and men, they are advantaged everywhere, right? I was sick of it. I mean, stop complaining and make a change. At least that, that's what I think. And, well, I believe everyone is the architect of their own fortune. So empowerment, yes, but not based on gender, origin, or skin color. And one day, all of this started to boil up in me so much, so I couldn't keep it to myself. Um, and I wrote an article about it. The title? Fuck female empowerment. Well, what happened next wasn't something I didn't expect. There were hundreds of comments. But above all, massive blowback. It became personal and sometimes really ugly. The peak was when the German Minister of Digitization, Dorothee Beer, made a comment on it. Her tone was something like, the text is badly written and she's lying to herself, something like that. Well, of course, I knew that shitstorms happen, okay? But I didn't know what it felt like to be at the center of one. I felt like the whole world was conspiring against me and Johannes. He was leading this conspiracy. But wait, who, who is Johannes? So, Johannes is also a quite active LinkedIn user with an opinionated community. And he summarized what he had, well, observed in my article, and he disagreed with a lot of it. And I kept on checking his profile, and I saw more and more people rallying behind him. I sat in my room at night, in the dark, with this flood of comments pounding loudly in my head. And I didn't know what to do. I mean, who was that guy? And what did he have against me? I felt alone, and I had no idea what to do next. So, well, what do you do in such a situation, and how do you react? I took a course on crisis communication back at university, and I tried to remember the cases. If you don't communicate, others will do it for you. That was one of the sentences that replayed in my head. So I had to stay in control, right? I had to manage the narrative of the debate. Here's what I did. I wanted to meet Johannes. Social media can be so rough, partly because you can hide behind your little profile pictures. But I, I wanted to meet him. I wanted to get to know his perspective and put mine to the test. So we arranged to meet. And this takes us back now to that bar in Munich. Friday night, 8 p.m. The street lights have already been switched off. It's dark, I'm all by myself, and I'm waiting. I'm waiting for my greatest enemy. And I have no idea what to expect. It could be anything, right? From a slap in the face to a friendly hello. And then he walks in. And he looks quite friendly. When the first words were spoken, I was able to take off my bulletproof vest and send the bodyguards home. Jokes aside, we had a lot in common, and common ground unites people, right? The photo of the two of us in the bar went viral. I captioned it with something like, today I met my greatest enemy. And our followers from both sides applauded us online for this move. So, what did I learn? Well, social media isn't always easy. Far from it. And yes, you can get caught in a shitstorm without an umbrella. But the crucial thing is how you meet the moment. If you communicate openly and don't give up control, you can emerge as a winner. Weeks after publishing, I realized that this whole story was my strongest driver for growth on the platform. Well, in fact, I gained new, more new followers within a matter of days than I did over the past few months. So having an opinion on social media is the most important factor for success. And not giving up on it at the crucial points 
is what makes success sustainable. So I had survived the shitstorm now, and I knew social media structures inside out. So it was time to give this whole knowledge a real foundation. And that's how I started to work on my first product, an e-learning course. Everyone would be able to tell their stories. And that's how I ultimately founded my own company, the People Branding Company. So, well, today, two years later, 15 top, profession, top professionals work in the company, and we are the go-to agency for personal branding and corporate influencing in Germany. And my own account, that's grown too. Today, more than 120,000 people follow me. And I often think about how I can make use of this reach of this followership, not for myself, but for people who actually make a change in the world. Serkan Ehren is such a person. He's a human rights activist, and he drove to the Ukraine at the beginning of the war. And, well, we handed over my account to him, and within one week, we were able to generate 1.6 million views for his account, and we could connect him to companies so that a short time later, 20 trucks full of medicine and food rolled across the border. So that's also the awesome power of social media. Social media can be a springboard for each and every one of you here in this room. Social media can make you visible. For me personally, it was the start of my entrepreneurial career. Without social media, I wouldn't be a founder, I wouldn't be a CEO today. But what is it for you? Well, every one of you has got ideas and thoughts worth sharing, and it doesn't matter what anybody else out there thinks, okay? If you want to start a podcast, do it. If you want to share your workouts on YouTube, do it. And if you want to show off your poodle sperm on TikTok, just do it. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. You don't have to live up to anybody's expectations but your own. So everything I started, whether it was launching my LinkedIn channel or building my own company, everything started by taking the first step despite any doubts and daring to do it. So now I ask you, do you dare? Dankeschön. <laughs> <laughs>